Welcome to a new episode of the Straight Wrestling Voices of the Indies podcast. I'm your host, Morbo, and with me, as always, everyone's favorite US independent wrestling fan, Sebastian. Thank you, as always, for the introduction, Morbo, and welcome, everyone, to this week's uh, episode of Straight Wrestling Voices of the Indies. And now our guest today is the other half of Totally Shook, the tag team champions from TWE. He's known for his work in TWE, but also other promotions like, for example, Action Wrestling and many more. And we are really happy to have him today. So thank you for taking the time and welcome Seamus Shook. Oh, baby, I'm fired up. Let's do this. I'm, I'm <laughs> fired up to be here. So, Jameson, for the people who don't know who you are, who is James Chuck? Well, I mean, um, I started training at TWE last September in 2022. Um, I had my first match in December of 2022, December 19th, uh, just recently coming off of one year. Um, mainly a Southeast guy, mostly doing work for TWE, like you said, but also New South's a big one, Action's a big one. Um, other smaller shows around the Southeast and I've been blessed to travel a lot, like traveling up to Jersey for uncharted territory season five, traveling up to Restival. I mean, um, I really don't even know what else to say about James. It's mostly just me, like me being an idiot running around with a cactus and stuff, but I mean, the people love it. So it's cool. <laughs> Can you tell us how did you get into wrestling as a fan and also what fascinates you about wrestling? Oh, well, the first show I ever watched, strangely enough, was actually Ring of Honor. That got me hooked. Um, I found, and then I just kind of followed CM Punk wherever he went. So then I found WWE and then like I found all these smaller shows like CZW, um, IWA and I was like okay there's these smaller shows I could do to like work my way up and then I found TWE and I was like that's just the perfect place to start but TWE really helped me find a home in wrestling and I'm forever grateful for Jaden Newman and Dylan Hales for giving me that time and I mean without them there would be no Totally Shook or Jameson Shook just in general um, what really fascinates me about wrestling is just I mean different ways you can tell a story and stuff like Moves are cool, sure, but I mean, to me, it's mostly all about the story and stuff. So, I mean, if you can't tell a good story in wrestling, then I don't know what to tell you. As you already mentioned, one thing that sticks out when seeing you wrestle is the cactus you come to the ring with. Can you tell us, our listeners, what the name of the cactus is? And is there a story behind it and why you take it to you to, to the ring with you? Oh, I mean, who? Um, so I call it Tactus because it's thumbtacks on top of a cactus. So, I mean, Tactus was just the natural name for it. Um, the story, well, I mean, it's it's kind of accidental. Um, I made a weapon to take to ICW in Chicago. Um, I hot glued a bunch of thumbtacks to a paper mache cactus. Uh, oh, that's cool. And then um, it was used. It Everyone loved it in Chicago. I was like, okay, I'll make another one. Um, the original Tactus is actually destroyed in Chicago somewhere. I don't know where it is. Probably some landfill. So the one I carry around that has like the silver duct tape around it, that's the second one. And recently, for Totally Shook, we got a pink one with a bunch of Tactus stickers on it and a fur coat for finesse and some gold thumbtacks. It's pretty cool. But I'm just happy that kind of stuff just takes on a life of its own. So it's pretty cool. At the uh, No Quarter Pinball Retina Block Party Beatdown 2, you were active as a commentator. Can you tell us something about this experience? And do you think that we will hear you being active as a commentator in the future? Because I think you did a pretty good job. Oh, dude, commentary is hard as crap. Um, <laughs> like, they, they tell me I did good and stuff. I mean, I don't even believe them. I just sat there and said whatever I wanted. And sometimes it's not a good thing. But commentary is hard. So, I mean... Honestly, my respect to all the wrestling commentators out there, because their job to me is like nine times harder than what we do. Because, I mean, without them, we ain't nothing. So, I mean, and for like commentary in the future, if I can get better at it, sure. I'll, I mean, I'd love to do it. I just want to do everything in wrestling personally. Well, we can definitely say that your home is TWE. 
And at uh, TWE, you had uh, some big matches last year. On October 28th, you and Finesse won the TWE Tag Team title at Nightmare on Dayton Boulevard. You lost it, but you won it back on December 9th. We already had Finesse as our guest, as you know. And how would you, from your perspective, describe the whole experience of winning the title, but also regaining it? So, like, people... To me, um, as weird as it sounds, like, titles, to me, like, I love them. But, like, when we won the titles, it was pretty surreal because, like, people were thinking, oh, it's just like, a, it's just an indie belt. But, like, that's my home promotions tag title. Like, that meant so much to me to, like, know that they have faith in me and Finesse to represent their brand as their tag team champions. And then to lose them so quick and to win them back. Honestly, again, what I said earlier about telling stories, the fans like you gotta the fans gotta know that title changes can happen at any moment in wrestling. So to me, like that's one of the smartest things that I've ever been a part of was that. Um but mostly like winning winning gold at your home promotion just it's just different than anywhere else. Um, but that's I mean, really that's all I got. It's just like I don't know. Winning your home promotions titles is very, it was very important to me. And I know it was very important to Finesse. And I'm just very happy that I could do it with Finesse, one of my best friends in wrestling. And I think you can definitely say, uh, not only with a title win, but in general, you really managed to establish yourself as a mainstay of TWE. And especially given that this is your home promotion, what would you say, what does TWE mean to you as a wrestler? for your career, but also like personally? So one of my personal favorite things about TWE is um, you go to the Twitter page and the first video you see is basically them. Uh, you see Jaden Newman in the ring with Matt Griffin and Mose, And they talk about how TWE is a safe space for people. And that wasn't just like a video. That is just flat out the truth. TWE is a safe space not just for me but for many wrestlers that come through and everyone that's come through to my knowledge has had nothing but positive things to say at least while i've been there nothing but positive things to say guys that come from the northeast um just talk about how it's a different vibe than some of the other south than like not southeast shows but shows they go to up north um Just the Southeast as a whole, like Action, New South, TWE, it's, there's just this vibe to it that's incredible um, that you can't really get anywhere else. Um, but TWE being my home promotion is very like, um, I'm trying to think of the right word to use. It's honestly very humbling when you could go out to other shows and be like, We have it so good at TWE Action New South. Those shows and I, humbling's the word, honestly, for my experience at TWE. You also were a part of the knowing shows of uh, TWE, of uh, TWE 43 Chaos 3, Cold Winter Long Nights, directly before Christmas on December 22nd and December 23rd. <laughs> On the first oh, day, you were a part of the We Have Too Many Crutches at the Venue Gauntlet match. And on the second day, you were in the main event in a Christmas Chaos Death match against Aaron Raid. How was this for you to be part of such a knowing show? And is it something you would like to do again in the future? <laughs> I just, I would like to say, I don't know how the hell we had so many crutches. I mean, there, there were crutches there I didn't even know existed. Like, we were just cleaning out the back, just trying to find crutches. There were wooden ones. There was one wrapped in barbed wire. I was like, how'd that get here? And then there was some for, like, children. And I was what are we doing here? Like, why do we have so many crutches? The no ring shows, I, like, I would love to do no ring shows. Um, It sucks to bump because, I mean, you're landing on the floor. And it's dumb, but it's fun. Like, it really teaches you how to work, in my opinion. So I'd love to do more, and I would love to like be able to learn just from doing no ring shows. And I mean, the match with Wade was 
one of my favorites of the year, uh, minus the whole center. I mean, the center block sucked, but I mean, other than that, everything was. I I just love. I'll wrestle in any capacity, in my opinion. Like cage, no ring, like anything. I'll wrestle in any capacity because there's something you can just learn from wrestling in any capacity, in my opinion. I said before that you are established at TW, and speaking of establishing, you also became an established competitor on the next up shows from Action Wrestling. Uh, how would you describe the role that Next Up plays in your career and also in getting on the Action Wrestling main shows as you did this year? Oh, Next Up is great. Next Up is a way to showcase, like, to not just action, but it's going on IWTV, so other people are going to see it too. It's a great way to showcase what you can do and to showcase to the people of action what you can bring to action wrestling. It's honestly one of my favorite parts of going to action, other than obviously seeing my friends and seeing the people I love. Um, and at TWE, we're kind of building the same thing with these crash courses. Um, we've had guys on crash courses that have become mainstays on Saturdays. Like Without crash course, I wouldn't be as like probably as good of a wrestler as I am, which I don't even consider myself good. But I mean, as like... But then we have guys like Big Dave who have just become incredible off of Crash Course. And same thing with like Josh Lott. They've become incredible too. Casey Owens. Aaron Wade has become my God. Like, in my opinion, damn near untouchable because of Crash Course. And it's the same thing with Next Up. Everyone just gets better. It's a rep. And what it's just, not, it's not the only thing it's going to do is help you and you're going to get feedback. So, I mean, Next up's great. Crash Course is great. And I just, I love that there's stuff like that in the South that people can do. On Action Wrestling, you uh, had a match against Menders on October 6th uh, of last year at Under the Lights. And I would like to know does it feel special to wrestle in such a unique environment um, as Under the Lights is? And especially against such a big name as a Scenic City Invitational winner of last year? Yeah, that match is going to stick out to me for multiple reasons. Again, it's Manders. That's he's one of the best going right now on the Indies. Um, Under the lights was very interesting because, like, you would go and you would think, like, all right, we're going to be wrestling in front of the regular fans, but in reality, you're wrestling in front of some people who've never watched wrestling before. So you kind of have to like slow it down. You got to and not do everything insane like do your biggest hits of course but like don't go to the extreme because like these people have never seen wrestling before and obviously you want to bring them back um you want to bring them back but don't go like too far for me because you don't want to go too far and then they come and you can't do the thing you just did but outdoor shows i love outdoor shows And I would do them every day of the week personally. But um, yeah, wrestling in front of people who like don't watch wrestling as much can also teach you a lot about wrestling in front of crowds. I do know wrestling a lot. Um, I loved it. I had fun with Manders. His chops hurt, but you know, it, it ain't nothing. And TWE, of course, are the only places in the Southeast where you have made a name for yourself. Um... As you already referred to, you've also appeared um, and you're still appearing for New South Wrestling. And you also appeared at New South Anniversary 8 last August, which is one of uh, the big shows of the promotion. How would you describe New South to our listeners who don't know much about the promotion? And how would you describe your experiences there? I've, nothing, I've had nothing but great experiences at New South. I get along pretty well with everybody. Um, New South, it's it's a great show. If you want to watch, they really do kind of have everything, which, again, that's just a perk of being in the Southeast because that's every show. But New South is also one of the shows that has everything. Like, you'll get storytelling, like Big Dave versus Lee. You'll get storytelling there. You'll have incredible matches with the likes of people like Braden Toon, um, a Carney's, Carrie Awful, and Nick Iggy the Akuto Death Society, like, you'll get great matches out of them. 
and so many more guys. And even like the guys that they bring in and train, like have been incredible. Like I just got back last night from wrestling in their inaugural Freebird tournament with Jay Newman and finesse. Um, I got home at like five in the morning, but I mean, I don't care. Like it's all for the business. So, um, new self has been very important to me. It's been a show that has helped me grow a lot also. Um, and I'm not going to spoil what happens on the free bird cup, but me, me and Jay Newman, we had a little bit of a, we had some differences on that show. Um, it'll be on IWTV soon. First of all, we really appreciate it that you are taping the interview with us today. So shortly after you came back from, uh, from the uh, Freebird Cup, and you already mentioned it. How was it for you to represent TWE in a six-man competition as a part of Team TWE alongside, you already mentioned him, Jay Newman, and of course your tag team partner, Finesse, at New South at their first ever Freebird Cup yesterday on the day of this recording. How was this experience for you? Um, so a lot of people um, would say that the decision to use me may or may not have been like, a no-brainer because I'm at New South a lot, but I'm just very happy. Again, I can do it with one of my best friends in the business, Finesse. And again, it's extremely like humbling to like know that they would trust you to represent their company at another show, which then again, I was teaming with the boss. So, I mean, if I'd have done something dumb, he would just beat the hell out of me. And I mean, I wouldn't have blamed him. Um, so again, like it's very cool to know that TWE has that faith in me. And that's um something that I will never take for granted. And that show also last night was very special for me because um I had a, like a lot of people come up and be like, oh, that's that was a good match and stuff like that. Like, oh, you killed it, all that. One of the things that like stuck out to me was like there was this um one of these fans came up to me. And was like, I've been at New South for these eight years, and you are by far my favorite wrestler. And I was like, that's insane. Just knowing the people who've come through New South. And and again, it's it's extremely humbling to know that somebody would take me as their favorite wrestler. When again, there's guys like Nick Iggy, Braden Toon, Kerry Awful, um, Hunter Drake, just so many great wrestlers to go through New South. To know that they would pick me is very, very nice. It's again humbling and it's great 2023 was not only a year where you made a name for yourself in the southeast um but also in independent wrestling in general on the fourth episode of h2o uncharted territory you were a part of the king's revenge scramble match what can you tell us about the match in specific and the opportunity to wrestle for h2o new jersey in such a or for such a well-known company in independent wrestling and for or as a part of such a well-known show as Uncharted Territory? It was cool. Um, I was very late to the game, obviously, because um, we had Uncharted down at TWE in Chattanooga and got to showcase a lot of the Southeast. But then it was my turn to go up north, and we had to go up north. And um, it was very fun um, getting to work with some of those names, like Jimmy Lloyd, uh, Zeta Steel, and getting to see people, which, once again, you'll get some very good feedback from like uh marcus mathers matt tremont um uh brandon kirk um it was a great experience um the scramble match was fun i tapped out to a uh boston crab that wasn't even applied to me um I was just having fun um it was a great experience all around and hopefully soon i get to go back up to h2o and do the thing again You also were a part of a delegation from the Southeast, I want to call it, uh, including the goons of the Scenic City, Lizzie and Peyton Blair, and Raid and Shiny Shoes. And um, you traveled to the Westerville in Worcester for the end of the last year. How was the trip for all of you and for you in particular? Oh, the trip up sucks because we tried to cram six people in a five-seated car. Um... So we had one person sitting on the floor and the trip took longer than 15 hours. It ended up taking like 22 to get up there. So for 22 hours, we were just switching people out to sit on the floor and sit up front. 
uh, the best seat was to be the driver and you're trying, you have all these people in your hands. So, I mean, the ride up sucked. The ride back was great because there was only five of us. Um, uh, Restival, again, great experience. It's a great learning experience and it's a great way to get your name out there, especially in front of a big show like Beyond. Um, so I would definitely like recommend to like anybody who wants to get your name out there, go to Restival because that is the best way to do it because shows from all over are coming to showcase like PWF, um, Sean Henderson's show, ICW No Holds Barred. Um, and I traveled with a great group of people. So overall, trip was great. The ride up was just hell. You said it's a great way to get your name out there. And I would like to know, did it already like open new doors for you or give you new opportunities for the future? Or do you think it will open new doors for you in the future? Oh, it's definitely going to open doors for me in the future because to you just showing up and helping out goes a long way for promoters. Um, I kind of knew like when I showed up, I probably wasn't going to do anything, but I was completely okay with it because I got to, again, I got to spend a weekend with some of my favorite people to be around and, um, it's promoters. That stuff goes a long way because it shows you care. So just going out there and getting your name out there is very just important just to travel, even if you're not doing anything. Like it was the same thing with ICW in Chicago, like, and I made some great connections in Chicago with some of the ICW guys and, um, same thing with Russell, like making some connections with some, um, with like Sean Henderson and some of the guys and beyond. It was pretty cool. Um, so I definitely like, if you can go out, you should 100% do it because I mean, it goes a long way for promoters. Someone who has definitely opened new doors for himself is Brain Toon, who also organized a show called Brain Toon's First of December to Remember, where you had a match against Aaron Wade. He's also from the Southeast uh, and is recently one of the wrestlers I see on the most shows that I watch. Would you say that he's kind of a role model for you with the way how he, also coming from the same region as you, also appearing for the same promotions, has gained more and more recognition in 2023? I would say Braden Toon is doing it the best out of indie res like any indie wrestler in the Southeast. Um, he's one of those guys who will go out, travel, just to get his name out there. And now he's a regular on GCW. And that's huge. Um, he's definitely like somebody everyone should follow the path of, I think. Because he's, he's just doing it right. Um, yeah, he, he he's a very smart guy. And that match with Wade, again, like, I don't know what it is, but every time I wrestle Wade, I got to do something dumb. Um, but the fans appreciated it. So, I mean, as long as the fans are happy, I'm happy. Before Marble will ask you what is next for you, I would definitely like to know, how was your experience at Brain Tunes first December to remember? Does such a freelance show that is a project of a wrestler um, – Does it feel different to work or does it have uh, a different energy compared to a show hosted by a promotion? It definitely had a different energy around it because it wasn't a guy who always runs a show. And for a guy who doesn't always run a show, Braden did great. Um, there were a lot of matches and it was long, but the show was very fun. Um, I was showing up excited to be like, okay, this is just going to be like any other show I've done, but When I did it, it was very different to any show I've done. Um, everyone was just like, because sometimes you'll go to shows and people will be like, you'll have sections of people who are excited to be there. And those people who are kind of dragging, no one on that show was dragging around. Everyone was fired up. Everyone was ready to put on one of the best shows that they've been on. Um, that's one of my favorite shows I've done in the past year. Um, And I'm very thankful that Tune will, that Tune put me on, and that we're doing a second one, and on a March 16th. You are mostly known for your work in the Southeast region, but as we talked about, you also recently appeared in the Northeast. Do you have ambitions to return to promotions like H2O or beyond and establish yourself there? I would. Oh yes. Um, 
I would love to make my like official H2O debut on the H2O show in general. Beyond debut is like to a lot of indie wrestlers, that's a bucket list people. That's like a bucket list item for them because Beyond is one of the biggest shows on the indies in general, not just WTV, but everyone knows Beyond on the indies. Everyone knows Wrestling Open. Um, and then just the Northeast in general because the Northeast is, has, is such a it's hot. Like it's hot right now for independent wrestlers and independent wrestling in general. Um, it's a hotbed for independent wrestling. And that's somewhere like I want to be, but not even just the North. Like I want to go out West. I, I just want to be everywhere. Like I just want to be everywhere in wrestling. And if I can do that, then I will see myself as a very successful wrestler. If I can just be everywhere. So do you have like certain regions in America or certain promotions you would like to wrestle in the future? Oh, yeah. Um, it's mostly Northeast promotions, like again, Beyond, Wrestling Open, H2O, um, Expect the Unexpected, ETU. That would be a great show. Um, trying to think, what are there? Because there's a lot. There's just so many. Uh, ICW, obviously, no holds barred. What? Come on. Um, but as far as it kind of goes for me, like everyone has these promotions they want to wrestle for. And obviously like there's promotions I want to wrestle for, but again, I just really want to be everywhere and do everything. And whether it be tag matches, singles matches, trios, uh, death matches, it doesn't matter. Like I'm fired up and I'm ready to do it. And I just want to be everywhere and take myself everywhere and do everything. So is going abroad and resting in maybe Europe or Japan, Japan also a goal for you? Oh, yeah. Japan would be incredible for me. Um, Europe with obviously WXW and shows of that nature over there. Um, Progress and shows over there are dream promotions, obviously, for, for me. But just Japan also, just wrestling in Japan is one of my bigger goals um just again just being everywhere would just be incredible for me just being able to hop on planes travel to europe japan just anywhere in the world to wrestle um is like a set in stone goal i have and it would mean a lot to be able to do that and do like Not just do it to travel, but you're doing what you love and what you've loved since you're a kid. That's what makes it different, in my opinion. And can you tell us what are your goals for the future in general as a wrestler? My goals in the future? Um, I just get out more. Again, being everywhere is like my biggest goal. Like, obviously, wrestle more. Like, I look back on it. I just literally did the book today because I write down all my matches that I've had. I've had 93 matches since my debut, which is a lot. Um, my goal was like, my goal for 2023 was 20 matches and just to try to get a couple TWE bookings. But now I've wrestled many more than that. And um, I've become a mainstay on TWE and, and a two-time tag team champion. Okay. That's it. We are at the end of the interview. And as always, the stage is yours. You can plug and promote anything you want. Oh, what I want to plug and promote. Um, uh, again, Freebird Cup coming up really soon. Um, was just filmed for IWTV. Don't want to spoil anything. Oh, shoot, I'll just run through my whole January right now. Honestly, if that's okay with you all. Um, of course. TWE, January 13th, Baptism by Barbed Wire, obviously going to be headlined by Jaden and Shook D, but you know Totally Shook will be there defending our tag titles as the fighting champions that we are. Um, January 19th, Action Wrestling, um, I will be there. Don't know what's going on yet, but I will be there. Um, January 20th, New South, um, which, which will be filmed Friday by TV. January... 26 back to action january 27th twe in the afternoon because that's the same day as the royal rumble january 28th retinal wrestling to be in a scramble 
with my scrambled eggs and such. Okay. Thank you very much for the interview, Jameson. Um, Sebastian, I am a huge fan of you and Finesse, so it was very cool to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much for letting me do this. <laughs> and of course, also a big thank you from me to you, more as always, to you, Florian, as always, and especially, of course, to you, Jameson. What we already said, we are big fans of you and Finesse, of course. And uh, also a big thank you to all our listeners. And thank you to everyone who listens to this episode and goodbye.